But uh, Your Excellency, thank you for your kind words. Thank you for all that you've done for the community in Ottawa. Thank you for the sculpture. Thank you for waiting until we built the building so we'd have a place to put the statue appropriately in front of the uh, India Canada Centre. And uh, thank you for your words today. Uh, former uh, High Commissioner, thank you for gracing us with your presence. Uh, Dr. Humar, thank you for organizing this wonderful event, which you do every year, and we're very, very appreciative of it. And it was nice that it's raining today, because we always say that the rain symbolizes happiness and growth. So it's an auspicious rain, so thank you, even for the rain. And thank you to the Gujarat community for the lovely performance. It was wonderful. Um, when the statue arrived, uh, the first comment that a student at the university made to me was, oh my, he's going to be very cold in the winter. <laughs> and a little while later, as it got colder and colder, they put a scarf around his neck and a little toque on his head. Um, and my first thought was, oh, we shouldn't touch a statue. But my second thought was, how wonderful. He's been welcomed to Canada and he's been adopted as a, a Carltonian, and he can indeed be brave the elements on our campus in a cold winter day. Thinking about the clothes, though, as I was putting on my warm sweater this morning, I was thinking about the clothes making the man. And Gandhi didn't need any clothes to express his philosophy and his ideas. But his clothes did speak of volumes. And when they say, speak truth to power, and we all talk about Gandhi going to England to meet the highest authorities dressed as he was, that was speaking truth to power. And then I thought, you know, it's wonderful that he can be at Carleton, and you don't need to worry about what you wear. Whatever you wear, we accept you, and everyone is equal. And then I thought, you know, what he wore still symbolizes poverty. And it still reminds us that there are people in the world who have less than we do. And every day when we think university costs so much, the price of food has gone up in the market, whatever, we should remember that there were people, and there are people, that can't buy anything. And the statue and Gandhi remind us of our membership in the human race and our, our responsibility to act with humanity to others. The second thing is the statue has no pockets, no place to hide an arm, no place for weapons. The only weapon was the power of the individual to change the world. And that is a really good message for us at the university where we learn that as students, one and all of us, we have the power with our thoughts and words to make this world a better place. So the statue is well placed and well situated. And even though you're not looking at the statue, you're looking at another sculpture right behind me. And some of you might know that this sculpture was a tree in Old Ottawa South. There were, there were a lot of stories in the newspaper about it, and the 200-year-old tree that was rotten and had to be knocked down, had to be cut down. Nobody wanted to lose the tree. And a sculptor said, I will take what remains of the tree, and this is all one piece, and turn it into a sculpture, and I'll put it at Carleton University. And the tree is called Sailing Through Time. So it reminds us of the past and the present and the future, as Gandhi did. And the tree, if you look at it, is upside down. These are the branches, and the root part was the big part at the top. And that's what we do at universities. We make people think differently. We turn their ideas around. And isn't that what Gandhi did? So, a little bit of Gandhi is inside while you celebrate his birthday um, in a warm shelter out of the rain. Thank you all for being here, and thank you again, Your Excellency.